Good morning. Good morning and welcome to this service of worship at First United Methodist Church of Sanford. We're a rowdy bunch, so y'all don't worry about that. Uh, my name is Megan Killingsworth. I'm one of the two pastors here, and we are excited to welcome you in person or online, however you are worshiping with us today. However you are worshiping with us today, um, we are excited to have you. Is that better? Is that good? Awesome. Okay. Uh, before we get started, we have a couple of announcements. You can check your bulletin always for some of those announcements, but I want to highlight a couple. Um, we mentioned last week if you wanted to volunteer with the children's home to find Larry, those spots are full. So, um, you all know that we always have these opportunities to, sh to serve at the Florida United Methodist Children's Home. So if you wanted to do that uh, and you don't get a chance to, just keep your ears and eyes open because we have a really cool opportunity pretty regularly to work with them. You'll notice the Christmas tree over here, and um, I want to point your attention to this handout, the Florida United Methodist Children's Home uh, handout in your bulletin. This is our missional opportunity for the month of July. What we do is uh, we actually um, <laughs> celebrate Christmas in July uh, with the kids at the children's home, and we have the opportunity to collect school supplies in preparation for um, all of the work that they will do in getting their students ready. They have a, a school that's on campus, and they also send some of their kids to um, local public schools in Volusia County. And so we want to help alleviate some of the burden that the children's home has in preparing all the supplies and stuff for getting ready uh, for back to school. So if you are interested in helping Helping with that, you can check out this list. There's more information on there, um, and it's it's just a really cool chance for us to be connected. Um, I also want to point out to you um, there's some book studies. Um, there's some information about summer choir. Uh, all in your bulletin, so check that out. And also tomorrow, the office, uh, or Monday, the office will be closed in observance of the Fourth of July. Uh, be careful with the fireworks, y'all, all right? We're not trying to make Florida Man headlines. So I hope you have a wonderful fourth um, and that you all have a chance to rest and relax uh, and to spend some time with people that you love. I want to invite us now to turn our hearts and minds toward meeting the God who was already here before you showed up this morning, a God who loved you before you knew to love God back, a God who is here to connect with you today. I will invite us now to do our uh, call to worship. Please read the bold words. Blessed be the Lord, the maker of heaven and earth. Praise be to God, the giver of many gifts. Our help is in God's name, the one who calls us here. We come with songs of praise, with prayers too deep for words. Blessed be the Lord, the maker of heaven and earth. Blessed be the Lord. Let us pray. Holy God, we thank you for gathering us together this morning and giving us the opportunity to connect with you. Lord, if we came in with heavy burdens, give us the capacity to lay those down. If we came in with joy, give us the opportunity to share it. And if we came in looking for co-laborers in the vineyard, connect us with one another as we seek you. Lord Jesus, we love you. And we ask that you would be with us here and now. Amen. Amen. Would you stand as we sing our opening hymn, number 127, Guide Me, O Thou Great Jehovah.
Friends, I'll invite you to remain standing and turn in your hymnals to page 882 as we read the words of the Apostles' Creed. Will you join with me? I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day he rose again. He ascended into heaven and seated at the right hand of the Father and will come again to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Good morning. Good morning. The first reading is Psalm 131, a song of a sense of David. My heart is not proud, O Lord. My eyes are not haughty. I do not concern myself with great matters or things too wonderful for me. But I have stilled and quieted my soul like a weaned child with its mother. Like a weaned child it's, is my soul within me. O Israel, Put your hope in the Lord, both now and forevermore. The word of the Lord. As we turn our hearts to God in prayer, I'll invite you your attention to the insert in your prayer bulletin, or in your bulletin with the prayer uh, insert with prayer requests from our community and, and individuals that have asked for prayer. Let's go to God. Holy and living God, we believe that you hear us when we pray, and we come to you with all of the burdens and all of the joys and all of the uncertainties and all of the anxieties of this world and on our hearts, and we bring them to you in this moment. God, to receive them into your loving arms, receive them with care, and walk with us on this journey. Oh, Lord, we pray for those in need of healing those persons in the hospital, those recovering from surgeries, those anticipating what is the next step on their medical journey. God, we pray for those who are hurting physically, spiritually, or otherwise. God, we pray for those in need of healing. Willie Pegram. Mark Stan. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. God, we pray for those in need of wisdom and discernment, those who are uh, facing uncertain times, whether starting a new job or are uncertain about their financial situation. God, those who are worried. God, we pray for those who are leading uh, the church on a global scale. We pray for our elected officials. God, we pray for all and any in need of wisdom and discernment. Our Bishop Ken Carter. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. God, we pray for those who are lonely this day those who are in the foster care system, those who are deployed, 
those who are incarcerated, those who have to work late hours to provide for their families, God, those who are homebound and shut in, those who for any reason are separated from their community. God, we pray for those who are lonely. Ethel Thornton. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. God, we pray for our enemies. God, give us the capacity to realize our shared humanity. God, heal the hate in this world and heal our hearts. God, we pray for our enemies. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. And God, we pray uh, prayers of thanksgiving, prayers of gratitude. We pray uh, for those times when we feel like our prayers have been answered. We say, thank you, God. God, hear now these prayers of celebration and gratitude. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. God, indeed, hear our prayers and walk with us this day and always. And now may we say the words that Jesus taught us by reciting the Lord's Prayer. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory forever. Amen. We now have the opportunity to continue worshiping with the giving of our tithes and offerings.
God, throughout our world, we hear so many cries of mine. Lord, we come here today because we declare that everything we have is from you. It is yours first. And it is ours together to share with the world. Lord, we pray that you would take all of these gifts, that you would bless them and multiply them. God, we pray that they would be used not only for goodness and hope, but that all people would know your justice, your grace, your mercy, and your love in our neighborhood, in our community, and in our world. God, bless these gifts and all who are here that we might be a blessing that you share wherever we go. In Jesus' name, amen. I'll invite you to turn in your hymnal again to page 846. Our second scripture this morning is Psalm 124, and as we've done for the last three weeks, we'll sing this song out of the Psalter, Uh, 846. It's fairly short this morning. We've only got two musical responses, but wherever you see the red R, Mitchell's going to play us uh, what it sounds like and what what we're supposed to sing. When the storms of life are raging, stand by me. If it had not been the Lord who was on our side, let Israel now say, If it had not been the Lord who was on our side, when foes rose up against us, then they would have swallowed us up alive. When their anger was kindled against us, then the flood would have swept us away. The torrent would have gone over us. Then the raging waters would have gone over us. Blessed be the Lord who has not given up, given us as prey to their teeth. We have escaped as a bird from the snare of the fowlers. The snare is broken and we have escaped. Our help is in the name of the Lord who made heaven and earth of life are raging, stand by me. Friends, this is the word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. Thank you. I know it's been a while since we preached like this, y'all. It was a pandemic uh, experiment, so you stick with us, okay? Um, We're going to try this a couple times this summer. We thought today was appropriate because we are talking about what it means to follow God on the journey and to know that we are not alone. When you think of the sounds of everyday work, what do you think of? When you think of an office worker typing away or, or farm workers picking fruit in the fields or, or a skilled laborer finishing this last carpentry job, uh, what can you hear? Can you hear the music? My, uh, my very first job was counting nuts and bolts in the back of a hot Florida warehouse all summer. Uh, And I remember distinctly, it was a family business, okay? It wasn't like a child labor thing, y'all, don't worry. Um, I think they paid me five bucks an hour and made me save half of it. So I'm in the back of this warehouse. It's hot. It doesn't smell great. Um, I'm just counting things over and over. But I will never forget the feeling of that warehouse in the summer because it was the year that Faith Hill and Tim McGraw's hit, It's Your Love, played on the radio station 10 times a day. <laughs> In fact, I don't know about you, but when I think of most of the jobs that I've had, there's, a, there's kind of a soundtrack, like the, the music that was playing or the music I was kind of humming under my breath or the things that, that kind of shaped that particular period of time, that day in, day out background. Music has played an incredible role in the life of many folks trying to make it from Monday to Tuesday and from Tuesday to Wednesday, 
trying to make it the next step on the journey. Folks in the fields and on the line, folks walking in the civil rights movement, folks bored every afternoon, folks who are trying to move forward have often found a way for music to pull us up just enough to take the next step. Songs and poetry have have kept us going in the middle of the journey. That is what we're talking about today in the Psalms. The music and the poetry of the journey, walking with both hope and endurance. Let's pray. Lord, we thank you that you are a God of the beginning and the middle and the end. Give us eyes to see the glimmer of your light no no matter how far off it may appear sometimes. Give us echoes of your call no matter how long ago it may have felt. And give us strength for the journey as we lean on you and each other in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. All right, so this summer we've been in a journey uh, through the Psalms. Over the last four weeks, we've talked about a bunch of different types of songs, Psalms, and there's fancy names for them, but if you have forgotten, please do not be worried. We, we talked about Psalms of praise, which are obviously Psalms of uh, joy and, and expectation. We've talked about Psalms of lament, which are the prayers that you can barely eke out on the worst days. We've talked about songs, uh, psalms of imprecation, which is like, God, you better smite those people because I've had it. And we talked about psalms of invocation, where we're saying, God, I need you to show up today because I'm kind of a hot mess and I'm not sure exactly what's going to happen next. You may feel like, wow, we barely scratched the surface of psalms. And I want you to hear, that's true. And that's something really cool about the Bible. You can read your whole life in Scripture and find new ways to be surprised, new ways that God is inviting you to participate in the work of God's people. And so here, as we study Scripture and as we continue to walk through the Psalms, today we find ourselves talking about a journey. What do we do on Tuesdays? What do we do between Christmas and Easter when it's not the best day and it's not the worst day and frankly it feels a little mundane? What do we do when we're weary? When we can't see the starting line or the finish line yet? What do we do when the life of faith can feel unremarkable? We are very lucky, y'all, because the Bible is full of people. I know we hear these like big burning bush stories and we see these miracles, but when you read the kind of day in, day out, the journey of people between the big stories, you hear that scripture is full of people making it through to the next day. The Israelites uh, were in the desert for 40 years. So occasionally when I get a little whiny and I'm like, God, it's been three months I've been praying for this, I am reminded that people who've gone before me have waited a lot longer than I have. It's one of the things that makes the Jewish faith utterly, uh, really remarkable is a lot of the other contemporary faiths of the time when they lost their place or they lost their markers, or they lost a lot of what had had marked history in a particular geography, early Judaism did not. It didn't fade away because the Israelites got very good at following the Lord in route, at remembering the Lord on the run. These many journeys that we read about in the Old Testament trained them for preserving their faith and their relationships with God in the long haul. Now, of course, they had bumps. We know about those bumps, right? But the practice of continuing and taking the next step can be helpful for us. We also hear in Scripture about the disciples wandering around with Jesus through the countryside and from one place to the other. Um, One thing I love about the Gospels is that uh, you notice Jesus is on the move so much that if you stay still too long, you might have lost him. (laughs) Jesus is always way out ahead of us. And then we hear in Paul's letters, all of his journeys, he loves to recount. Um, 
Paul loves to tell you all the places he's been and all the hardships that have happened along the way. And a lot of his marking in his writings is him saying like, well, I was going here and then I got rerouted and then I was going here and I meant to go here, but whoops, I had to, re- I had to go another way. The reality of a life of faith And the reality that we see in the Psalms is that God is with us at the ups and downs, with us on the best and worst days, and when the miles keep passing, and when we're just wondering what to do next. This is the gift of the Psalms. They invite us to live not only with hope, but also with endurance. So today we find ourselves in a specific part of the Psalms. We talked about that in week one. The Psalms have different sections, and you notice that uh, Psalm 124 and 131 are very close together, where we've had some very spread out Psalms. These are very close together. That's because these Psalms are a part of of the book of Psalms. Uh, There's 14 Psalms called the Songs of Ascents, and Ascents uh, meaning like you, you are ascending somewhere. And most scholars believe that these Psalms were songs that people used on their own journey. Uh, the songs of ascents, the ascents, the journey that they're talking about is likely to be believed uh, when people would travel to and from Jerusalem from the three major festivals of the year, which would have been Passover, the Festival of Weeks, and the Festival of Tabernacles. And there's some, uh, that's not on the quiz. So don't worry <laughs> about that. Um, but when people were journeying, there were large, large groups of people coming to and from Jerusalem for these cultural Jewish festivals. And these songs were songs that they carried with them both to and from there's a couple of things we need to note about the songs of ascent. One, they're shorter. You heard one, Psalm 131, it was like four verses. And, and Psalm 124 was also fairly short. And scholars believe that, that was because they were sung, they were memorized, they were carried in the hearts of the people traveling. The other thing that they note about the song of ascent is that there's different, um, there's different voices involved. Whereas a lot of the psalms may be an individual crying out to God, some of the songs of ascent are corporate prayers. They're sometimes almost call and responses, again, indicative of this idea that there may be a song leader and then a chorus responding to them. So we see that these are a different type of psalm inside the book of Psalms. This is Psalm 120 to 134. And one of the things that the scholars believe is that these psalms were kind of these mini snapshots of the whole biblical story. If you're traveling on the road and you're going up to Jerusalem, you want to remind yourself what it is that you're making this large journey for. You want to remind yourself what it is that God is all about. You want to remind yourself of the story of who God is and who God is calling you to be. And one of the aspects of the psalms is that they remind us that we already know how the story ends. In other words, if we use this journeying language, we already know our ultimate destination. We know that we are moving towards God. There's this really great image uh, of Scripture that it goes from garden to garden, right? We start in the Garden of Eden in Genesis, and we hear language in John's Revelation uh, that, that there's a garden in Revelation where God is making all things new, where God is reforming all things. So this journey of faith starts in a garden and ends in a garden. But as to Megan's question, what do we do in the middle? We know where we started from and we know where we're going. We know that God is our bookends. And we hear language in Psalm 124 that reminds us of that. I love the way that the psalmist words it in Psalm 24, 124. They say, if the Lord had not been on our side, and they say that almost every single verse, if the Lord had not been on, si- on our side, then the sea would have swallowed us up. Mm. If the Lord would have not been on our side, then we would have given up a long time ago. In other words, if God had not been with us, we wouldn't even be this far on the journey to begin with. It's a reminder that God has been on the journey with us. God is journeying with us. And that like Megan reminded us, God is always out in front of us, guiding our next steps of the journey. In Psalm 124, we hear this call to look backwards, but we look backwards in order to look forward. We remind ourselves of the story of the goodness and the faithfulness of God in order to see where we are going. And when we know where we're going, friends, we can have hope. Hope that we have a destination. Hope that God has us in his hands. Hope that we will still have uh, enough in our tanks to make it to the final goal. We can remember that the stories lift our hearts, remind us of who God is and the promises that God gives us. We know where we are going, and again, we hold that precious, fragile, sometimes irrational gift of hope. 
but how do we hope in our final destination and still have enough endurance for the journey for today? This is what we get from Psalm 131 and really Psalm 132, so 130 also. <laughs> um, there's two psalms that are right next to each other, and they're really short, and they, uh, if we heard them in Hebrew, it would, it would sound more like a song, uh, but they're kind of partners. They're little short kind of quips that you could sing along with. Um, 130 says, O oh Israel, hope in the Lord, for there is steadfast love. And 131 says, O oh Israel, hope in the Lord from this time on and forevermore. There's this hope that's bringing them forward and this reminder of having enough for the journey. 130 says, Out of the depths I cry to you, O Lord. Lord, hear my voice. My soul waits for the Lord more than those who watch for the morning, more than those who watch for the morning. They are songs of hope and cries for help and the need for endurance. Now, I, wanna, I wonder if you heard in the psalm that we read the imagery uh, of the woman walking with their kids, women walking with their kids in tow, and people whose hearts aren't lifted too high. We heard that image in 131. These help us to see the tunes that are hummed by everyday people of faith, waiting and working and wondering and wandering and pushing forward. That image of being like a weaned child. Now, I have to tell you, this hit home for me because as a mama of an 18-month-old, I still remember the very vivid shrieks of a child who is still requiring milk at all hours of the day. That new baby life for me is marked by that sudden and, oh my goodness, this is threat level red, we must eat right now sort of shriek. I, in the grocery store, I still hear kids do that, and all the muscles in my body tense up because I'm like, somebody get that kid some milk right now. The psalmist says, I'm, I'm like a weaned child. I'm like a kid who knows that there is enough snack in the bag, and we've made it through nap time and rumbly tummies before. We've got some history. I'm trying to quiet my heart and to trust you, the psalmist is communicating. They show us that we can travel with an embedded sense of trust that even if the next step isn't right in front of us, we have walked before. We have been carried before. We know the comfort of the Lord, and we know we are going somewhere. We hear that we get enough bread for the journey. Now, you all know the Israelites wandering around. They didn't get enough bread for tomorrow, and if they tried to gather up more than they needed today, it rotted. But what we know in the Psalms and we're reminded of is that God will give us enough bread for the journey. The next thing that we get in this kind of wisdom from folks who've been traveling for a long time is a sense of abiding trust in trying to do the next right thing. We hear this language of waiting, this language of hoping. We hear this language of trying to keep my pride in check, right? Like I'm, I'm trying to be as humble as I can, Lord Jesus. And I know you're going to carry me. Um, how do I, as a person who is trying to trust the Lord, who has seen the Lord work before, how do I take my next step? And we hear the Israelites in these Psalms trying to take the ne do the next right thing. How do we do the next right thing? That's really what we're being invited to do. Without all of the light ahead of us, without all of the steps clear, we are invited to remember we have bread for the journey, and our job is to humble ourselves and just do the next right thing. The last thing we can glean from the Psalms this morning is that we never have to go alone. That we always have one another. We always have a travel companion on the road with us. We believe that when we journey towards God, inevitably we journey towards one another. And we journey with one another. The gift of this life of faith in community is that we always have someone to sing with. To pull a harmony part, if I may. To sing and to hum the melody and to elbow us in the side when we forget how to sing. And maybe even remind us of the words to say. We have the songs and the voices surrounding us of those that have gone on before us, those who have sung these songs in the fields, in the factories, in the streets, and their communities. And think of this very room. Among us, we have those who have walked through the pains of addiction, 
Among us, there are those that have overcome unimaginable circumstances, those who are battling cancer, those who are helping to fight injustice around the corner and around the world, those who've lived a lifetime of faithful journeying towards God in all the joys and in all the struggles and down all the winding roads and along those long stretches of road where nothing seems to happen and no progress seems to be made. And friends, they are doing it and they did it by putting one foot in front of the other and trying to do the next right thing. In the Gospel of Luke, there's a story of journeying of two disciples. And they're walking down the road on a a journey that was certainly disorienting and uncertain. They're trying to make sense of the life and figure out what to do next after the death of their friend and teacher, Jesus, after Jesus was crucified. And while they are walking down this road, Scripture tells us, Jesus shows up though the disciples don't see that it's Jesus at first. Jesus shows up on this journey and and walks with them, even though they can't recognize him at first. The disciples then recount to this new partner on the journey, they recount the story of Jesus. And Jesus makes no attempt to reveal himself or to admonish them for not recognizing him. Rather, Jesus simply walks with them, asks, asks some really good questions, And gives them space to process and discern what to do next. I think if we think about it, we can be like those disciples, not sometimes not even noticing that Jesus is on the road right next to us. Sometimes in this life of faith, when we're searching for God, all we can see is one another. Sometimes it feels like we don't know where this road is going, and we certainly don't know what lies ahead and how long it's gonna take us to get there. And in these journeying moments, friends, may we have the courage to lean in towards one another on the road towards God. May we recognize that that God gives us bread for the journey and fellow sojourners on the journey to, to lift us up, to encourage us, and to sometimes carry us when we can't take a step on our own. And may we have on this journey, may we have the eyes to see that God is indeed with us and that we will get there together one step at a time. Thanks be to God. In the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit, we pray. Amen. Sometimes we can get the impression from faith that when we talk about things like bread and life and hope that Jesus means like ethereal things, like some bread somewhere else. No, this God, this is a God who shows up in real bread and in real life and in real neighbors. And so we have the opportunity together today, friends, to meet Jesus, to receive grace in the real and tangible elements of bread and juice. Christ invites to his table all who love him and who earnestly repent of their sin and seek to live in peace with God and one another. Friends, let us pray. Holy God, we confess to you that sometimes we get tired of walking. Sometimes the drama of beginnings and end and crises are preferable to the mundane. But God, we also know that you are a God who meets us everywhere that we are. We confess, Lord, that we don't always see you in your goodness, in your world, in our neighbor. Lord, forgive us for making faith ethereal, only spiritual, somewhere else that is not concrete. Forgive us for missing the glimpses of you Forgive us for where we have harmed ourselves and others and our relationship with you. Help us, God, to be people restored by the power of your love and mercy. And help us to restore our relationships with one another as well. In Jesus' name, amen. Friends, I want to invite us now to share signs of peace and hope with our neighbor. Will you share the peace of the Lord with each other?
Thank you. <laughs> Good. The Lord be with you. Yeah. May the Lord be with you. <laughs> you got to get a little rowdy before you come to God's table. Sometimes we think, we think Jesus is like silently um, always praying in the corner and that that's our job too. Uh, but Jesus loved to party. So church should be a little bit of a party every week, right? As we come to God's table, we have the opportunity to be invited by the God of the universe who did not stand far, who did not stay apart, who did not want to be separated from us. We are invited, you, you, by name, you are invited to God's table to celebrate the goodness of God, to receive the grace that God has for you, and to be nourished for the journey that God is inviting you on. Let us pray. Holy God, we pray that you would pour out on us gathered here and on these gifts of bread and juice, your Holy Spirit. God, make them be for us the body and blood of Christ that we might be for the world the body of Christ redeemed by his blood. It will take a miracle, Lord, but that's what you do. Make us one with Christ, one with each other. And one in ministry to all the world until Christ comes in final victory and we feast at his heavenly banquet. In the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit, amen. On the night in which he was given up for us, Jesus took bread. He broke the bread. He blessed it and he said, this is my body which is given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. And after supper, he took the cup, he blessed it, he gave it to them and said, this is my blood of the new covenant, poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. As often as you drink it, remember me. And so God, we ask that you would not only give us these elements, but give us your grace. Amen. You may have heard this spiel a billion times, and this may be your first, but I think it's important for us to remember, this is not my table. This isn't our table. This isn't a table uh, simply of this congregation. Today, this is God's table. And at God's table, everybody is welcome. Everybody. Whatever you came in with, whatever baggage you might carry, whatever other people might have told you, you are welcome at this table, and so we want to invite all people here to come and receive. We'll have two stations, and we do have a gluten-free option if that's important to you. Won't you know that God has invited you to come?
Would you all stand for our final hymn, number 733, Marching to Zion? The Picnic Project is their last Sunday gathering after, I think, 12 years. They've been gathering every Sunday. And so today is the last day they're going to gather on Sundays because they're doing other uh, events. So if you're around town, stop by and say hi and mark the beauty of their fidelity to this community for so long um, and the exciting journey that is ahead for them. And now as we go forth into the world, may we be people with hope and endurance People who know, who can have the confidence of knowing we have enough bread for the journey and we are not alone as we go. And now may the Lord bless you and keep you. May the Lord make his face to shine upon you and be gracious unto you. May the Lord lift up the light of his countenance upon you and give you peace this day and forevermore. Amen. Mm -hmm. Thank <laughs> you.